Then we have the final level, Biogeometry Level 3, which is two days, and it's devoted to analyzing and balancing the human energy body, primarily using the system known as biosignatures. And we also teach biogeometry design principles so that you can do hands-on design work, whether it is architecture, interior design, graphic design of any type, you name it. Uh, anything that has a design element to it can be given beneficial energy qualities through the techniques that we teach at level three. And so at level three, we go through all these different uh, principles and show you how to hands-on apply them for whatever the design project is that one is working on. Now, I'll just very quickly show you some of the projects that have been done in Egypt. This is one project that was designed by Dr. Karim in Egypt as a resort on the Red Sea. And in fact, everything inside the locations emanate very strong beneficial energies according to the application of these concepts. Dr. Karim is himself a practicing architect. Now, another important part of this work in level three, in addition to all of the design knowledge that we impart, is working directly with the human being, balancing and healing the human being at all levels, physical and subtle bodies. Let me tell you just a little bit about it. It's a very deep and profound aspect of the work. We can use geometrical resonance for healing. Now, one thing that's understood in biogeometry is that the way that energies move create specific functions. So what in China they might call qi, or in India called prana, living vital energy, runs through the human body and runs into all of the organs and systems of the body. And as the vital energy runs through the systems of the body, it creates specific movement patterns. These are three-dimensional geometric movement patterns that have the particular effect of creating a function based on the shape that the energy is moving in. They're originally three-dimensional, but they can be simplified down to a two-dimensional shape. That two-dimensional shape contains the information of the function from the three-dimensional energy movement pattern. And so there's a system that we teach at level three, which is very profound, called biosignatures, in which we give the student hundreds of biosignature patterns, and they can then uh, test themselves or any other person for what energy circulations are not in the correct flow pattern in the body and then give them the correct energetic information to restore that flow pattern. Now a very important principle comes into play here. Energy, shape, and function. So the meaning of this is that what we understand in biogeometry is that energy needs to be told what function to perform. And it gets told what function to perform by the shape that it moves into. So energy into shape equals function. So instead of seeing biosignatures as just these squiggly lines, understand them rather as the movement of energy in a particular pattern to create a function in the human energy body. And so when we look at the anatomy of the human body, the lungs, the kidneys, the liver, etc., all have specific patterns of energy movement in them, which give rise to particular functions. So for instance, these are a few biosignatures for the spine. It's very important for me because when I began working in biogeometry, I'd had a very severe car accident and a lot of damage to my neck and spine. And I had a lot of pain and a lot of immobility because of it. After working for a short period of time with Dr. Kareem, he had identified a set of biosignatures that I needed, and my quality of life was dramatically improved almost immediately. Now, one thing that we always say in biogeometry is that we make no medical claims, and we also make clear that the results of biogeometrical work for any particular person is unpredictable. Every person is their own unique energy system. But this system of biosignatures can be extremely powerful and profound for many people finding the correct pattern of energy movement to create a specific energetic effect. So in working with these particular biosignatures, we actually give students hundreds of biosignatures to work with at level three. And there are many different types of biosignatures. The energy patterns related to internal organs, patterns related to general body systems and subsystems, 
patterns that balance the subtle energy behind particular conditions of ailments in the human being. Patterns that are related to esoteric energy balancing, spiritual connection, and even patterns related to the divine names understood in the esoteric systems of the Middle East. One of the classic ways of using this knowledge of the shapes and the patterns was to put the pattern on something to be worn, on an amulet or a medallion, and that's done today in Egypt. These are examples of some of the biosignature medallions that we import from Cairo today and which we make available. This is an early version, and this is one of the uh, modern versions of it, where on this side we have patterns related primarily to energy functions in the human body, and here we have patterns related to spiritual aspects and spiritual functions. Now there's been quite a bit of testing of biogeometry for uh, establishing its effect on living energy systems. And one thing that they did is they used infrared testing in biogeometry in one particular project, and they were able to show that there was a significant uh, alteration to the human infrared energy of the body when wearing different biogeometrical shapes, medallions, pendants, or pendulums. And we go into detail on why this is at level three of the training, but it has to do with the fact that the energy that they manifest actually neutralizes a detrimental energy quality in the human energy field. But it could be actually directly empirically detected on infrared measuring devices, such as those that Nokia Corporation uses to test cell phones to see how quickly your brain tissue heats up from the antenna on the cell phone. So we can show empirically that there are effects from these biogeometrical shapes and forms. Which leads us into the uh, final topic, which is scientific validations of biogeometry in Egypt and in Europe. Dr. Karim first began to publicly reveal his work at the Egyptian National Research Center. And at the Egyptian National Research Center, uh, he showed that he could directly affect living energy functions of different types of living beings through simple geometric forms. The scientist at the Egyptian National Research Center at first didn't believe it was possible to create these effects because it's completely outside of their uh, theory of how energy works. But Dr. Karim showed them that through a simple geometric form he could affect living functions. In fact, the work he did with them was so impressive that they created a separate study project at the Egyptian National Research Center headed by Dr. Karim to examine the effect of geometric forms on living energy functions. Now after that, Dr. Karim was invited to participate in the Egyptian National Hepatitis C Research Project. This project was paid for by the Egyptian government and was headquartered at one of the oldest universities in the Middle East, Al-Azhar University, and it was headed up by the dean of the pharmaceutical school, Dr. T Dr. Taha Khalifa. Now after the first six months of this project, what they did in the project is that they had different groups, and in one group they would give them interferon. In another group they'd give them a different European pharmaceutical, or a Chinese herb, or something of that kind. They tested everything they could get their hands on that might have a beneficial effect for hepatitis C, because that illness is epidemic in North Africa. One group got the biosignature patterns that Dr. Karim had found were effective for hep C. Now it's not that biogeometry is for hep C in particular, but simply that we can use that knowledge to find a way to energy balance virtually any type of energy state. And Dr. Karim, and we always repeat, said himself that, again, we don't make any medical claims for this work. This is all experimental. Uh, he's not a medical doctor, he's an architect, but he understands the energy science of ancient Egypt. So after the first six months, the dean of the pharmaceutical school, Dr. Taha Khalifa, went on Egyptian national television and they asked him, what was the most effective thing that you found? And at first he didn't want to respond, but then he came out with it and he said, out of everything that we tested, by far the most effective, with an average 90% normalization of enzyme levels in the people in that group, was the biosignature patterns from Dr. Ibrahim Karim. And uh, it was far beyond the second uh, most effective thing studied in the project. And he said they were going to examine this much further because they could not account for it 
according to their knowledge of modern medicine, how this could possibly have worked. but nonetheless, it was the most effective thing they found.